Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you're really going to like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I create a video. So today I'm doing a tutorial of the Webull app. Now the Webull app, if you're not familiar, is a free trading app that you can download on iOS or Android. For this specific tutorial, I am using the iOS version. And I'm just going to walk through the app step by step to show you all of the different features and how to make trades, how to buy, how to sell, and what type of information you can view by using the Webull app. So currently I am on the watch list portion. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, you have the different sections for the watch list, markets, you have the Webull icon, community, and then the menu button. So we're going to start with the far left and we're going to talk about the watch list. So the watch list is just a list of stocks or ETFs that you want to follow. You can also follow specific indexes. As you can see listed here, at the top I have the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF. I have NEO, which is a Chinese electric car company. I have VOO, which is another Vanguard ETF specifically for the S&P 500. And then I have a few other indexes and a few individual stocks. So what you can do is either click the magnifying glass at the top of the page and then you can search either the name of the company that you want to search or the specific ETF. As you can see, I recently added the VTI ETF to my watch list. But if you want to add another stock, we'll go with, let's look at Netflix. So you search NFLX, which is their ticker symbol, or you can just search the word Netflix and it will pop up. And then you click the plus sign to the right of the stock that you want to add. And now is added to your list. But you can also search for news on a specific company or a specific word. So let's say you search movies and then it'll look up recent articles which mention movies. You can also search post. So if someone mentions movies or they mention Netflix in their post or they can mention the specific ticker number. And so you can search either the ticker symbol a specific word or the specific company's name and then you can also search people and we'll get more into the people section uh, later but you can search me AJ mobile money and you can see my specific profile and then you can also go to the help section um, if there's something specific you want to search so we hit cancel we'll go back to the watch list and now let's scroll through. Let's look at an individual stock. If you were to click on Apple, for instance, you can now view the information on Apple, the current stock price. Uh, you see at the top right, there's an orange star that indicates that this stock is on your watch list. You can remove it from your watch list or you can click that star to add it back. And so if you weren't already watching Apple, you would just click that star and it's now on your watch list. If you look at the icons directly below the watch list star, if you click there, you can see what those icons mean. So that lightning bolt means you get real time quotes. They're not delayed price. So the current price of Apple stock is $316.85. I am recording this in the morning before the market opens. So that's why you don't see much of a change or any change at all. But if you look below the bigger number of 316.85, you see 316.66, which is the current pre-market price. And it's a couple minutes behind. You see it's 749 AM and it's 747 according to the pre-market price. And then you can see the other icons, NASDAQ basic, national best bid and offer, NASDAQ total view, marginable up to 4X leverage. That means that if you were to deposit, let's say $1,000, you could trade up to $4,000 with this specific stock. You could, you could leverage, which I don't recommend for most people. And you can also short it with leverage of 3.33 times leverage. And so it's a little bit less than if you were buying stock, but you can short stock with leverage as well, which is something I also wouldn't recommend for most people. And so going back to the main page, you can see here you have a chart showing the one day movements of Apple stock and you can change it to five day that will update one month, three month, one year five year and then max would show since the IPO of Apple. And as you can see, if you did buy it at the IPO, you're probably really happy now if you held it all this time, it's up over 73,000% since its IPO. But even just looking at the past five years, 
still great, up over 150% over the past five years and over the past year, despite the huge drop back in March, late February. It's still up over 77% over the past year. So if you are a trader and you're not new to trading stocks, then you probably know what most of these lines are. But if you click to the right of all of the years, you will see the three squares and a circle. That will allow you to either draw patterns or add your own indicators. Basically change up all of the lines that are appearing here so that they can help you with your day trading or even your longer term trading to find entry points and things of that nature. Um, if you also click on the chart symbol here, you can change the way the chart appears. So right now it's a line chart. If you wanted a bar chart, you can click on the fourth icon and now you have bars instead of individual lines and each individual bar here represents one minute on the chart. And as you can see the options for the one day, five day and all of that, that changed once I changed it to a bar chart. And so right now it's a one minute. If you click where it says one minute, you can change the amount of minutes to let's say a five minutes. And so that means for every bar, green or red here, that means that bar represents five minutes of time. And you can also change it to a daily bar. So each bar represents one day or a weekly bar to where each bar represents a full week of trading. And so depending on how you want to view the chart, you can change it to whatever you want. And they even have yearly bars. You can see the full chart and how Apple has been pretty much positive almost every year. You can see that over the past almost 20 years, there have only been three years where Apple stock ended up being less at the end of the year than it was when it started the year. So as we move further down, you can see the individual buy and sells for Apple, and that's on the quote section. So you can see at a specific time how much Apple stock sold for, how many shares were bought, the total volume. You can see all of that information here. So there's a lot of information that you can view within this Webull app. And as you move further down, you can see the order flow distribution. And if you click the little I symbol to the right of order flow distribution, it can give you an explanation of what that means. And then as you scroll farther down, you can see that information as well. Now going back up to where it says quotes again, on this line, there's additional information. So you can click on news. If you wanted to see the latest news on Apple stock or whatever individual stock that you're researching, you can see that here and you can just scroll through all of the news. There's a lot because it's Apple. Everyone's always talking about Apple. Um, you can also view comments. And so these are comments from people who are using the Webull app. You can see whether people on Webull are bullish or bearish about an individual stock. And you can see individual comments that people have made within Webull. So Webull is also kind of a social app as well. You can think of it similar to stock tweets where, you know, people talk about the stock, people talk about how they're trading and whether they like it or they don't like it. And you can like people's comments. You can reply to other people's comments or you can kind of like retweet or re-message someone's comment. As you can see at the bottom right, it looks just like the retweet button on Twitter. And so if you want to contribute, you can also comment on any of these individual stocks or in the comment area in general. And so at the very bottom of the screen, you see the huge trade button. So if you want it to buy or sell, you can hit trade and then you can make your trades. And you can choose a limit order, market order, stop orders. You can also do advanced orders like one triggers other. You can do one cancels other and then one triggers other which cancels other. These are really advanced options for trading. So if you have multiple trades, whether it's the same stock or multiple different stocks, you can make it to where once your first order that you want to go through completes, it will then move on to a next order. So it's a kind of a, a mini algorithm that you can create on your own if you want to trade multiple stocks. So one example of how I've used it in the past is if you know I'm deciding that I'm going to sell one specific stock and then go and buy a different stock. So let's say I had a bunch of Apple stock. Once Apple doubled, you know I gained 100% on the stock. I didn't want to sell half of it to take out my original funds, and then with my original funds, then go out and buy another stock that I want to purchase, and then wait for that stock to double as well. And so that way I could put in that order, and I don't have to think about it. You know, whatever your target is, it doesn't necessarily have to be double. It could be a 10% gain or a 20% gain. But once you put in that order 
and that order fills, it will then move on to the next order that you set up. And then you can view it. You can have the visual setting here where you can see the ad order. But that's really advanced. So most of my followers are more beginner investors. So we won't go into detail about those. But the basics that you do need to know is a market order. When you do a market order, you're just saying, I want to buy this amount of shares, whatever that is. So you can click the plus button to go up and down. Or you can just type in how many shares you want to buy. Or you can click the button to the right of the plus button. And you can choose a higher number. Either way, however many you choose, you didn't go down to time and force. You can choose a day. So if you wanted to buy 10 shares, but you only want this to go through today, you can have it for a day or you can do good till close. And that will give you, usually with most platforms, that'll give you a 90 day period to where whatever price that you chose to buy it at, it will have about 90 days to make that trade before it cancels your trade. And so usually like with a market order, you can't do good to close. You can only do day because it's going to buy it immediately and it's not specifying a specific price that you want to buy it at. But if you're doing a limit, you can say, OK, currently the price is three sixteen seventy two, but I want to buy it at three hundred dollars. So you could change this to three hundred dollars. You can move the plus and the minus sign. It'll go up by individual cents. You can drag this little bar right below the price to whatever price you want or you can type it in and put just $300 and then once you use a limit or a stop order one of the stop types so you have stop limits as well then that's when you can actually use the good to close option and you can also choose to buy during extended hours so yes on Webull you can buy outside of the normal 9 30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern hours and on Webull and most platforms, the extended hours go from 4 a.m. Eastern up until 9.30 a.m. Eastern because 9.30 a.m. is regular hours. And then after regular hours, which is 4 p.m., it will then go up to 8 p.m. Eastern. And so stocks are more volatile during that time period. So you definitely want to put in a limit order when you're trading outside of extended hours because the amount that it could fluctuate up or down is drastic because there's a lot less people trading. And so if you do choose to use extended hours, make sure you put in a limit order to ensure that you're getting it at a good price. And then you see below the extended hours, you get the estimated amount of based on how many shares you're buying. And so once I click the plus button to add one, you see the estimated amount changes to 316.90. And then as I continue to click the plus button, you can see that the price of the individual stocks goes up. So once you're at 10, it's now $3,169 because you're doing 10 times 316.92. And then the take profit stop loss button, you can choose the specific price that you want to take profit or stop your loss. You can do that before you put in your trade. And that's really cool because you can put those in at the same time. So if you, let's say you buy it at $300, and you want to take profit once it gets to $330, let's say, that will give you a 10% profit. And then you also want to stop any losses at 10%, then you would put it at $270. And then our original buy, as I mentioned in that example, was $300. And so you already have the $300 limit price, which is where you're going to buy it. You have the limit price of a 10% game at $330. And then you have a stop price of $270 once you lose 10%. And so and these could be set up as good to close or day as well. And so you have both of those orders set in when you actually decide to click buy. Now, if you already had any orders open or any orders that you made that aren't that haven't been settled, you can click on open orders. You can see here that I don't have any open orders. You can click on my positions. You see that I don't own any Apple stock within the Webull app. And you can click on options if you do want to trade options with Apple. And so trading options is a more advanced thing. I won't go into too much detail about trading options, but the basics as far as options are that you can trade Apple stock without actually owning the stock. You would be basically trading the right to own future shares of Apple if you decided to buy them. But as long as you close out your options trade, then you're not obligated to purchase Apple stock. 
So options are used more for short-term trading, but also as a protection mechanism. So let's say you own a lot of Apple stock and you knew that there was going to be some short-term drop in price whether it's bad news or whether it's the overall market is dropping, you could then, instead of selling your Apple stock, you could then put in a put option order. Let's say that you thought Apple stock price is going to drop to $305. You could then put in a put order for the Apple stock. That way, as the stock is going down, you're actually making money on the option trade while your Apple stock is actually lowering in value. And then if it were to go down to $305, as I used in the example, you didn't have the right to purchase the stock at $305, but you also made money while it was dropping down instead of just losing money on the stock that you already own. And so options trading really isn't meant for beginners. You have to know a little bit more. You have to know how to look at charts and read them. So you can tell specific price points where there's resistance and where there's support. And again, I'm not going to go into those details. This isn't really for beginners. And so if you are a beginner investor, I do recommend, you know, not trading options until you've done some research to understand the basics of trading. So let's go back, hit the arrow at the top left, and we'll go back again to see the analysis page for Apple. And so on this page, these are professional analysts that research Apple stock, and they talk about whether they are buying or they're selling or they're holding Apple stock. And so you can see that there are 39 analysts who have rated this. Zero have said that they want to sell Apple stock. 7.69% uh, believe that Apple will underperform other stocks. 17.95% believe that you should hold on to your stock. 43.59% believe you should buy Apple stock at its current price. And 30.77% believe that it is a strong buy at its current price. And so th this analysis is based on the current price and based on these analyst predictions of where Apple stock will go in the future. And so you can see the specific price targets below. At the high end, you see that $370 is someone's price target or multiple analyst price targets. The average of all the price targets of those 39 analysts is $311. And then the lowest price target is $195. And you can also see the positions cost distribution. If you click the question mark next to it, it'll give an explanation of what that means. If you're a beginner, you don't really have to worry about this too much, but the information is there if you do want to read it. Now we'll go back and we'll scroll down to the profited share section. It also gives an explanation of that as well, but it's basically how many shares are owned where people are actually already profited. So 94% of shares that were bought, they are in the green, meaning they are making money, while the other 6%, they are actually losing money. So that means they bought above the current price that Apple stock is being traded at. And this is the ex explanation here. And the same thing with cost concentration, you can click on the eye symbol to learn more details about what that really means. Now, as you scroll down more, you see the support and resistance, like I mentioned in, when I was talking about the options trades. They do have lines in here that you can look at. And so the resistance is at you know the top, the peak of what Apple stock has reached in 2019. And then you can see the support level. That's the level at which the stock didn't go down any further. More people came in and bought the stock once it reached that price. And so you can view that here. That's a simple line, but you can also create your own support and resistance lines within the app. Now you can also look at short interest, and that is the individuals who are shorting the stock, people who believe that Apple stock will go down within the next 12 months. And you can see the definition of what short interest is. And so this is actually really interesting information because if there are a lot of people shorting a stock and then the stock is decide it's going to go up. This may be your reason if you're a day trader or you're a swing trader. If there's high short interest on a stock and there will be a lot of days that it would take for those people who are shorting to cover their positions, then that means the stock could go up in value very quickly as those individuals decide to cover if there was some really, really good news on a stock that was doing really bad. And as you can see, at the beginning of the year and the end of 2019, there was more short interest than there is currently. And that's because, you know, Apple stock, along with the rest of the market, has actually gone down over the past two, three months. So as you continue, you can see 
more information about short interest. But we're going to go back up to press releases. Now, press releases are different from the news section because press releases come directly from Apple versus news is anyone that's talking about Apple. And so you can see dividends. If you click the arrow to the right of dividends, you can see when the last time dividends were paid and how much the dividends were per share. And so as you can see, if you scroll way to the bottom, you can see that dividends were paid as far back as 1988. And that was a short term dividend. Uh, they stopped paying dividends in 1995. And then they started paying dividends again in 2012. And you see they started at $2.65 per share. It went all the way up to $3.29 per share. And then it dropped to 47%. The reason that there was a drop is that during that year, there was a seven to one split. So it wasn't that they cut their dividend. It's just that the amount of the dividend per share went down because the amount of shares went up. And so you'll see that also on the splits section. So if you see at the top, we're going to click on splits and you can see that in June of 2014, they had a seven for one split. And so that that explains the big change in the dividend. So the percentage of the dividend per amount of shares there are, are available that hadn't changed but because there are more shares then you divide the dividend price by the amount of the share split so the dividend was divided by seven just as the amount of shares was divided by seven so if you owned 100 shares of apple during that time period then the amount of shares that you received after the seven to one split would be seven times that so now you own 700 shares but the price of apple stock was divided by seven but the one great thing that you can see is that over time, Apple has been slowly increasing the value of their dividend. And so if you're looking for a stock that can actually grow significantly over time, but it's also increasing their dividend over time because Apple has hordes of cash that they're holding on to, then Apple is a great stock to choose if you were to buy an individual stock. But now let's go back and we're going to look at insider activity. So if you wanted to see people that were that either work for Apple and that hold a lot of shares or professionals or hedge funds that own a significant amount of shares. then you can look at the insider activity and you can see when those people buy or sell stock because they have to report when they buy and sell stock. And so you can just scroll through and you can see different people that are either officers of the company or maybe they work for hedge funds. So you can see Tim Cook here back in August of 2019. So that's probably the most famous person that you'll see here. But as you scroll through, you can go back pretty far to see when people sold or when people bought stock into Apple. And you can also see those press releases listed here. And so whenever they report earnings, dividends, any major events, uh, you can view those press releases here. So that's one really cool thing about Webull. There is a lot of information that you can get just within the Webull app and for individual stocks or the stock market as a whole. So you can see their financials. You can see their earnings per share. That's EPS. You can see specific indicators like return on equity, return on assets, earnings per share, and lots of more information. And so if you click the I symbol next to key indicators, you can get the definitions of all of these indicators that are listed. And then go back. You can look at earnings forecasts. So what they expect the earnings to be for the next quarter or the next year. You can look at the income statement for the company. You can look at revenue. You can look at operating income. And so if you really want to get detailed as far as the financials of a specific company, you can really dig into their quarterly or their annual information direct from the Weeple app. So that's really cool. And you can also look at their balance sheet, their total assets versus their total liabilities. And you can view more information on their balance sheet here. And at the top, instead of going back and forth, you can actually click where it says balance sheet and you can switch between income statement, balance sheet and cash flow. Now we're going to go back. And you can look at peer comparisons. So so you can compare Apple against other companies within their industry. 
and you can see the names of those companies listed below. As you can see here, no one really compares to Apple. Like I wouldn't compare Fitbit to Apple. I don't even know what Dacent Zone is. Maybe that's a phone in another country, maybe China, not really sure. Nokia doesn't compare, doesn't even get close. But you know, they have to categorize all of these companies in a specific sector. And so while Apple does a lot more than just sell the hardware phone devices, they do have services. They also make more money off of their hardware, you know, their iPhones, their Macs, etc., than any other phone company. But they also provide services for their hardware as well. And so really, there is no comparison when we're talking about Apple. And so you can also look at the profile and you can get a description of the individual company. So you get a full description of what Apple does. They design, manufacture, and market mobile communication and media devices. And so if this were a company that you didn't know much about, then you could look at this profile and learn more information. And so on that insider activity page that I showed you earlier, you can actually look here to see what those individual names, like what their relationship is to the company. And so Tim Cook is the CEO. That's a name that you'll probably know. If you've ever watched a Apple keynote, then you'll remember Phil Schiller. He is one of the people that's always on those keynotes. And then Al Gore, people, you know him as the former vice president for Bill Clinton. He is an independent director for Apple. And those are the people you'll probably recognize the most. If you know more, comment below of the people that you recognize and what they do and where you know them from. And so that's all the information that you can view just on an individual stock. And we have a lot more to look at within the Webull app. And so we're going to go back and we're going to hit the menu button at the top left next to where it says my watch list. And that'll show my positions. So if you did already own any stock within Webull, I currently don't have any stock holdings within the Webull app. Then you could view all of your positions on this page and you can sort by symbol or you can sort by price, whichever you choose. Just by clicking on where it says symbol, it'll change the arrows as you can see, blue going up and down, and you can change the price as well. So what we're going to do next is at the very bottom, we're going to click on markets. Now on the markets tab, you can view the individual performance of an individual market. And so as you can see for the United States, which is highlighted currently, you see the blue lines that represents the Dow Jones. The S&P 500 is represented by the purple line and the green line is the NASDAQ. And so you can see that today, before the market opened, the Dow Jones is down 0.41%, S&P 500 is down 0.78%, and NASDAQ is down 0.97%. You can also see advances and declines distribution. So this is for all of the individual stocks. You can see that there's 5,107 publicly traded companies within the market. And 2,772 of those stocks are actually declining today versus 2,089 stocks are actually rising in price today or above zero currently. And on the net inflow section, you can see the inflow as far as the money going into the market versus coming out. And so you can see that at certain parts of the day, there's more money going in versus going out in the NYSE as well as the NASDAQ. The NYSE is the blue line, NASDAQ is the gold line. And this actually represents yesterday. So during the beginning of the day, there's a lot of money going in. It then dips down probably around lunchtime, and then it goes back up later in the day. You can also see the top gainers. So pre-market, you can see that there's a stock NAVB, which is up 128%. You can see that after hours from yesterday, they were up 75%. Same company, NAVB. And over the past five minutes, you can see the greatest increase over the past day, five days, one month, three months, or the past year. And so if you wanted to view a larger list, you could click on view all, and that'll show you a bigger list of the past 52 weeks or whichever time period that you choose. All right. So we'll go back. Now, if you want it, you could make this your watch list as well by clicking the star at the top right. And then you can choose one of the time periods. So if you wanted to do one day, we'll just do that. And then click done. All right. So now we go back. 
you can look at the top losers. So pre-market, there's a company that's down 23%. After hours yesterday, there was a company that was down 19%. Then over the past five minutes, the past day, five days, one month, three months, 52 weeks. And then, of course, you can view all and view the biggest list. And so, yes, there are companies that are down 100%, meaning they're probably delisted. And there are companies that are down 90%, and there are lots of them. So these aren't stocks that you would have wanted to be in. Hopefully you weren't. But if you're a beginner and you're investing in the total stock market, then you're getting not only all of the losers, but you're also getting all of the winners as well. And the great thing about winners versus losers is that winners can go above 100%. Losers, you can only lose 100%. And so they, it all evens out over time. You actually end up making more money. Because the winners can go up more than 100%, they totally knock out any of the losers. And so over time, you pretty much can't lose when you're investing in index funds on a consistent basis over a long-term period. Because as long as the economy exists, the economy will have money in it, which means you will have money in your ETF. And that's referring to a total stock market ETF or an S&P 500 ETF specifically, because they represent the whole economy or most of the economy with the S&P 500. And so as we continue to scroll down, you can see the most actively traded. And so these are normally big companies, or it may just be a company that's being traded a lot today because of some news. And that news could be good or bad. You can also look at the hottest ETFs, so which ETFs are being bought and sold the most. So you have the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the VIX, the Russell 2000, and the FTSE, FTSE. You can also see the best performing industries. Right now, three months is selected, so over the past three months. Uh, uranium, for some reason, is the best performing industry. That's really interesting. Over the past one month, it was home building and household goods, which is the leader at 32%. Over the past five days, passenger transportation services up 18%. And over the past day, aerospace and defense up 2.53%. So we have aerospace in one day, and we have uranium over three months. Uh, not making any connection there, but hey, maybe I should. And so that's it for the United States markets. You can also look at cryptocurrency by typing cryptos at the top middle. You can see Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, you see Ripple. You see Litecoin and lots of other cryptocurrencies. If you follow them, they are listed here if you just want to take a look at them. And you can also add these to your watch list as well. And then you can look at global markets. And so you can see... Uh, United States, you have all of the indexes, so S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ. You see the TSE, which is for Canadian stocks, the Toronto Stock Exchange. You see the FTSE, which is in London. You also see the Nifty 50, the Shenzhen, the SSE Composite, and you also see the Hang Seng, which is for Hong Kong, and they're actually down 5% today, so very interesting. Probably has something to do with the U.S. and China and how the U.S. recently mentioned that they're thinking of delisting Chinese companies from U.S. stock markets. And so that's probably affecting the Hong Kong stock market today because that's been a lot of the talk over the past week. And so being down 5%, that is huge. None of the other indexes are down that much, or at least not yet. So it will be an interesting Friday. And if you're into Forex, you can look at foreign exchange. So you have the euro versus the dollar, the Great Britain pound versus the dollar, the dollar versus Japanese yen. And you can view all of that information here. And if you wanted to view a specific market, you can click on these bubbles and it will take you to those global markets to see what's going on. So if you wanted to see the news like, hey, what's going on in Hong Kong right now? You can look at comments. You can look at the peers. So related stocks to the Hang Seng, you can look at ETFs and their performance and you can see which ones aren't performing well. I don't know much about the Hong Kong market, so off the top of my head, I wouldn't know any of these companies or any of these ETFs. 
but that information is there for you to view if you would like to. So going back, you can also hit the menu and you can see other individual countries. So if you want to look at the Singapore market or Finland, Iceland, Israel, Sweden, all of that information is there and then you can add it. So let's say if I wanted to look at Israel, I click on their name then I click the checkbox. And now they are on my list of individual markets. Instead of only United States, crypto and global, I now have Israel included as well. And then you can see the performance of individual stocks on their exchange, ETFs, the top gainers, and all of the same information that you can view for the United States, you can view on Israel. And so next, I'm going to go to the community section. So at the very bottom of the app, you can click on community. And on this community page, you can view streams of people talking about whatever they're talking about within the Webull community. It can be about an individual stock. It can be about ETFs. It can be literally about whatever you want to talk about. And this is why I compare it to having stock switch within your trading app. So there's people talking about their trades. Uh, this person is apparently on the beach enjoying life. Uh, and as you can see, you can talk about just about anything. There are hot topics that you can click on and see what they're talking about. Webull has their two year anniversary. So that's a really hot topic. Happy birthday or happy anniversary. I guess they're the same. You can look at options trading strategies. People that are bullish and what they're bullish about. People that are bearish, what stocks they're bearish about. And you can see all of that there. You can also go to the competition tab on here. There's a free paper trading. So paper trading is trading basically fake money. It's like monopoly money. And they have competitions to where if you are a leader or if you win the competition, top three actually receives prizes and you can actually receive real money for winning those competitions. So if you don't have any money to trade, let's say you only had the hundred dollars to open up the Webull app to get those free stocks. Well, you can also one, you can practice trading and two, you can join these competitions and then you can win money if you were to actually win these competitions. So as you get better at trading or investing or picking stocks and all of that, if you're able to win these competitions, you can earn free money so that you can trade real money. And so there's really no excuse. Almost anyone, if you have the time or if you take the time, you can learn to trade. You can look at what other people are trading on here to learn more. You can do your research. You have lots of research available within this app. And then you can also practice by using paper trading and you can join competitions so that you can see that your paper trading is up to par with other people who are trading here and win money for doing so. So you can see the top news as well. So these will be the news that people are looking at and talking about within the Webull app. You can view this on this page as well. And you can view the news of your watch list. So any stocks that you added on your watch list, you can view the specific news about those companies here in the community section. And so next we'll click on the menu button at the very bottom right. And from here, you can see I'm AJ Mobile Money. That's my profile name. Uh, you can look at Promotion Center. So the different promotions that Webull will have. Of course, if you haven't already joined Webull, what you can do is use my referral link, which will be in the description and the top comment in the comment section. If you click on my link, you will receive two free shares of stock within the Webull app if you deposit $100 as soon as you open your account. And you can see the free stock that you've received if you click on my free stock. You can see that here. You can see any alerts that you have set up. If you set up any alerts, they will be here. You can see posts. So any posts that you have made in the communities, you can see them here. And also any trading reviews that you've done. You can look at your favorites. So if you've saved any articles, you can view all of those saved articles on this section. On the calendar, any stocks that you own, you can see information about what's going on with those stocks in the calendar. You can view individual companies, like if there's some earnings or any specific news that's coming out today, you can view all of that information here. You can view that information about anyone that's paying a dividend on this date. And you can look at tomorrow or you can look at this week or next week. And then at the top right, there's a filter button to the right of where it says calendar. You just click there. 
and then you can choose what information you want to actually view. So if you want to only view dividends and IPOs, you can uncheck earnings, economic data, and holidays. And then that's the only information that will show our dividends and any IPOs that are coming up. And then I'll add that information back. You can also view the holidays. So if there's a holiday, you'll know whether the stock market is open or not. Now let's go back. Now, if you want a paper trade, you click on paper trading. You'll start out with a million dollars. Yeah, look at that. You got a million dollars. And so in order to show you how to buy and sell, you can do quick trade. You can choose a company. Let's choose Amazon. We're going to paper trade. Let's say we're going to buy 10 shares. You type in 10, click OK. I'm OK with buying Amazon at any price below 2500 and I want that to be good to close. You see the current price is $2,448, so you know that is actually going to go through. So let's put it close to its current price, let's say $2,450. And as long as the price doesn't go above $2,450 per share, then that means my trade will go through. Then I click on Confirm. And now you see that it's trying to go through. And so now we can go back again and you can look at your order list. And so you can see that that order is in progress. You can see performance. So once I actually own stock within my paper trading account, you can see how that stock has done over time. And then you can look at contests. So if you are part of a trading competition, you can get directly to your competition by going to the paper trading section and then clicking on contests. That's another way to reach it versus going through the community section the way we did before. So you can see the current paper trading leaderboard, someone named Flajive. Hoping I'm saying that right. They are the current leader. They are up by almost $100 versus second place, which is Bear. So they're doing really good right now. And so if you do want to join the next competition, you can see it there and you can click sign up now. So we're going to go back and you can see advanced quotes. If you want to get more real time quotes, you can subscribe and it does cost to get those real time quotes. Otherwise, your quotes are 15 minutes delayed within the Weibo app. But for just two dollars and ninety nine cents per month, this is something that you can add as a feature. And then there are other features that you can add as well um, within the Weibo app. So. If you want this updated information, you can pay for it if you need that information, or you can just use the free section where the price quotes are delayed by 15 minutes, but it is free and you can view that information. This is where if you do want some extra information and you need this, if you're a day trader, you're a high frequency trader, then you may want this information. You may want it to be more accurate than a 15 minute delay. And so you can also go to the Learning Center if you want to learn more about Webull, about any specific Webull functions, or just trading in general, they do have tutorials and informational pieces that you can read through so that you can learn more about trading and investing. So that's a good feature as well. And so with that said, that was a quick, not so quick walkthrough of the Webull app. As you can see, Webull has a lot of great features, a lot of very advanced features. And so this is definitely an app that you can grow with. It can be as simple as you would like it to be, where you can buy just individual stocks or ETFs, or you can go really advanced to where this is probably one of the best free trading apps in comparison to a very advanced app like a like TD Ameritrade's Thinkorswim. This is probably the closest that you'll get to Thinkorswim within a free trading app. This app has even more information than one of the more popular free trading apps in Robinhood. And if you don't already use Webull, you can use my referral link, which will be available in the description as well as in the top comment in the comment section below. Once you sign up using my referral link, you will receive two free shares of stock. Once you deposit $100 when you first sign up for the app, you will get one share valued between $2.50 up to $250 per share. And then your second share will be valued between $12 and $1,400. So that means at minimum, you will have two free shares of stock valued between $14 and at the high point up to $1,400.
And so even if you get the lowest, that is a great return. You're getting over a 14% return just by depositing $100 into your account once you sign up. So don't forget to click my referral link in the description below. All right, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking this time out of your day. If you're not already a part of the Mobile Money Nation, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Again, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.